Hello everyone, in today's video we will see the heat capacity in solids using Einstein model. Previously we have seen the classical model. So now we will see how the Einstein model will take us further closer to the experimental plot. So let's start. So Einstein's theory started with the two assumptions. First, each atom in a lattice is an independent 3D harmonic oscillator. So independent. So there is no interaction between the two atoms between the neighboring atoms also so independent word is important here and the second assumption is all atoms oscillate with the same frequency these two terms are important so as we know the atoms are acting as a harmonic oscillator so we know the energy possessed by an harmonic oscillator which is the multiple of h mu so this is the energy and we can find out the zero point energy by putting the n equal to zero that is e naught is equal to half h mu so this is the basics of a harmonic oscillator one should know let's move to the expression derivation part so we have to follow the same procedure same steps which we have followed in the classical case first we have to find out the average energy so first to find out the average energy we first know the distribution so number of atoms occupying the nth energy level is given by n naught exponential minus e n over k t and so we can write the average energy expression to be total submission n this we are using submission because the energy levels are discrete so they are not continuous so this is n n number of atoms possessing the nth energy level into the energy of nth energy level this total energy this gives the total energy divided by the total number of atoms that is given by n n so we will put the expression of n n into this so we will get n naught exponential minus e n over k t into e n and then similarly in the denominator n naught e minus e n by k t so we will put the e n value which is n h mu so we know the energy is the multiple of h mu so we will put the e n value into this so we will get submission n n naught e minus n h mu by k t n h mu and in denominator it is n naught e minus n h mu by k t so i will take out the constants this n naught h mu this is independent of n so we can write this as n h mu by k t into n and in denominator this is minus h mu n h mu by k t so we cancel out the n naught so an energy expression is h mu submission n n e minus n h mu by k t over submission n e minus n h mu by k t let's take e minus h mu by k t as x and n is equal to s so we have to rewrite this expression for average energy in terms of x and s so this is h mu submission s and s we can write this as exponential minus h mu by k t to the power n so we can write this as x to the power s so x to the power s and similarly in the denominator is x submission s x to the power s so this is expression for energy average energy in terms of x and s so let's see the numerator first that is submission s x s can be written as x del by del x to submission x x s if we will differentiate it with respect to x we will get this expression again so in we can read 
we can write this expression in this form also so now we will see the denominator denominator we are having this expression that is submission x to the power s x to the power s this is as a geometric series so we know the submission of geometric series that is 1 over 1 minus x so we will use this expression in the numerator part so we can rewrite this as x dx over 1 minus x 1 over 1 minus x so we will differentiate it so we, we will get the expression of x over 1 minus x ka whole square so we will put this numerator and denominator back into our average energy expression so, so our average energy expression is something like this so we can write this numerator as x over 1 minus x whole square and in denominator 1 over 1 minus x so we will cancel out 1 1 over 1 minus x so we will get h mu x over 1 minus x so we will again put the value of x our expression is h mu exponential minus h mu by kt over 1 minus e minus h mu by kt so we will take out the factor of exponential minus h mu by kt from the denominator so we will get this expression something like this so we will cancel out this factor so our average energy comes out to be this so moving on to the next page so total energy of a system system having n atoms each atom is having 3 degrees of freedom because we are having the 3d harmonic oscillators so our total energy is 3 3 degrees of freedom into n number of atoms into average energy of each atom so this is 3n h mu e h mu by k t minus 1 this is our total energy so we will now see we will now make the two cases so case 1 deals with the low temperature range so case 1 deals with low temperature so low temperature range this factor h mu by kt will be very very greater than 1 so we can neglect this minus 1 because the exponential will, al will also be greater than 1 so the energy total energy will be 3 n h mu over h mu by kt because we have neglected this minus 1 term so this we can rewrite this as minus h mu by kt so this is our energy for low temperature range so we can now find out the cv in here we have to differentiate the total energy with respect to temperature so it is a simple differentiation so I am doing the differentiation you can check this all the steps so this is 3 nh mu differentiation of exponential is e minus h mu and the differentiation taking this 1 over kt so we can you can check the steps so this can be written as minus 1 over kt square this minus minus cancels out so this is 3 in this h mu here the h mu here the square we can multiply and divide with k here and here so this is whole square term and this exponential term so this is our cv for low temperature so you can see here the cv is dependent on temperature which is not the case in the classical model
so next second case deals with a high temperature so in high temperature our factor this is h mu by k t will be very small the energy expression so the energy expression is 3 n h mu e h mu by k t minus 1 so we can rewrite this as h mu 3 n h mu e to the power x minus 1 we can use the exponential expansion that is 1 plus x plus higher order terms we don't need higher order terms because the x factor is very small so higher order terms will be very small so we can neglect the higher order terms so higher order terms can be neglected so we can substitute this e to the power x minus 1 this 1 plus x the 1 plus 1 minus 1 cancels out so 3 nh mu so we can put the value of x so, so this h mu h mu cancels out so our this is 3 nkt so we can find out the cv by simply differentiating it with respect to temperature so this this is us is approaching the classical value classical constant value so we can see th in the plot the einstein model curve here you can see for low temperature ranges for low temperature ranges it is showing the variation with the temperature and for higher it is approaching the classical value it is converging with the classical theory so this is the plot but you can see the solid line which is representing the experimental plot yet our einstein model is showing slight deviation in the lower temperature range so we will like get rid of this deviation using the day by model we will see this day by model in the next video stay tuned for the next video and this is it for today if you have any doubts related to this topic you can comment me if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching this video